some questions on across the laptop so that oh, we have yeah. the comments as well. So we just hit you with everything we have here. But there is a 30 second delay. Is it it's about 30 seconds in Ireland. 20 what? 20 or 30 seconds. 20 or 30 is seconds. Is that bad? No. No, it's just... Yeah. It is normal, but um, we'll be talking... Anyway, anyway, I mean, 20 seconds. Left. But I have, I have a few questions ready here. Brilliant. Last supper. Yeah. Okay, we're going to get rid of you tonight. Let's do our best. All right. Kevin Simmons. So, I think this is from your first time. I want to see if you have any questions. I do, yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I want to see course. if you're listening. I have, I'm, li- I'm also taking notes. I know, so I know. also, you know, going for a wee, things like that. Yeah. Kevin Simmons. So, so, did God alphabet us to size, to size, to size? Adam's primary agony by instructing him to name the animals in the garden. Oh, I've never made that connection. So that could be something. When I hear something new like that, you have to then go. So, no, but right here's how I read. You probably know this. You, you don't know this. You know this. I might know it. You might know it. Well, yeah, I don't think you've listened to very much of what I do. No, okay, okay. Yeah, no. yeah. I, actually, I was like, is this a joke? Question or not a joke question, but it's not a joke question. I don't know. No, I mean, I, I didn't take it as a joke question. Maybe no, it is. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But my reading of the Garden of Eden is this an eatable story. So, uh, in a, a what now? Eatable story. Story. So, in the eatable story, Oedipus wants to sleep oh, with his yes, mother. Okay, yeah. Father gets away, kills the father, sleeps with the mother, which basically means. Oedipus wants to return to the womb of wholeness and completeness. Father is in the way, kills the father, gets what he wants, and it's a disaster. Yeah. Story of the Garden of Eden, similar thing, is the apple is wholeness, completeness, be like God, don't like the lack. They break through the contradiction. They get the thing, and there it's a curse. It's a disaster. So for me, the, the whole beginning of the Jewish text is a type of connection with everything I've been saying. It's a type of... Um, direct embrace if you get what you want and you realize that that doesn't satisfy and then you're stuffed what do you do next um anyway so that's how i read the oedipal story um of the G- garden of eden but does that answer kevin's no, question it doesn't it doesn't at all does it doesn't at all answer, go like, no. kevin's question of did god alphabet us size 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 adam's primary agony was struggling him to name the animals of the garden yes or no peter yeah i would say no because i'm no say, okay fine moving on <laughs> Chris 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 yes or no? Yes or no? Yeah, that's all I want here. Does God exist? Yes or no? Yeah, no, that, don't, show your don't show your working eyes. Don't show your working eyes. Chris, Air, how do you tell the difference between a fundamental contradiction in reality mm-hmm. and a fundamental contradiction in our language? They're one and the same. That's why it says that. So, if you think about like mathematics, is is mathematics invented or is it discovered? Because in one sense, some people say it's invented because numbers are in our minds and in our concepts. But then reality seems to cohere with mathematics. So I would say at the level of being, there is contradiction. But at the level of language and the symbolism, there's also contradiction. And they're both interwoven and intertwined, which basically means that... Reality is divided. It's always been divided. That's the whole, that's what physics tells us. Language is that reality expressed subjectively. And if I could say this one thing. Yes, fi- you can. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes, um, go ahead. So in physics, so physics is the level of contradiction at reality. Biology evolution is the contradiction at the level of biological beings. Psychoanalysis is contradiction at the level of subjectivity. Whenever I say that Hegel goes into deeper and deeper contradiction, what I'm basically saying is that, that as the universe develops, the contradiction gets more and more interwoven into reality. So trees and dogs and cats and rocks are all caught in contradiction. Human subjectivity is where we can understand it and where we can subjectivize it. And when I talk about primal agony, that's a type of inability to subjectivize the contradiction. So yeah, reality and language, I think it's all connected. That, and that, yeah. And thought and being, by the way, is the fundamental thing of philosophy is how does reality, re- matter, connect with mind? How does thought connect with reality? How does stuff connect with consciousness? And in philosophy, there's always attempt to link the two. And the way to link the two is the contradictions in thought are 
are an expression of the contradiction of reality. Does that make any sense? Chris Eyre, <laughs> I hope you're happy with that answer. Oh, is that Chris Eyre? Oh yeah, Chris, hey Chris, how's it going? Chris is an odd mystic, so he won't like some, he doesn't like some of what I say, but he sticks around. I, and I like that. And I wonder, are you a descendant of the heirs from Galway? I'm from Galway originally, and famously there's the Air Square, and they had the biggest, the heirs back in the day, the biggest land estate in all of Ireland. So I wonder, are you one of those heirs, Chris Eyre? And it's like QI. I like it. You, you should throw in little nuggets of like. Just what do you mean? Nice. I should. I just did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just, well I done. Just did yeah, that's why, uh, you, you earned your money. money. You earned your money. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Angela. Good old Angela. Uh, good old Angela. Hi, Angela. Uh, Angela says, So are you saying, Peter, <laughs> that in the contradiction that is life, <laughs> we are to be moving from the nothing to the symbol and language rather than from the symbol to nothing? Yes. What? Yes, great. No. Yes. <laughs> next. Quick, next. Quick before he talks again. Yes. <laughs> okay. Expand. Expand, Peter. Expand. Expand. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, expand. Expand. Yeah, we're on the clock here. Yeah. Yeah, and what I've been saying tonight, which is kind of where I'm currently at in my thinking, is so I call the real, what I think, Angela, you mean by the nothing, this is probably a similar thing. The real is the unsymbolized rock that creates primal agony. So it's it's something that, when you see it in kids, you see it in psychosis, you see it, that, that sense of just utter devastation, utter there's a too muchness of life, you're going to be consumed and it's too, yes. too much. So that's the real. And so the idea is to go from the real to the symbolic. Um, and, and to basically chip away at the real through symbolism and through language. So rather than, yeah, rather than the other way around, it's like the real exists. Trauma is already there. Trauma is at the heart of reality. And we have to learn how to symbolize it. I don't know if, that's, if, that, if that connects with what you're saying, but that's what I heard you asking. <laughs> Suit yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, hit us in the comments. Oh, yes, please. Oh, so here yeah. comes Phil again. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a danger that you symbolize it too easily? That we give language oh. to something a bit too easily. So there's something traumatic and then we say what it is and then people have dealt with it but we haven't really. So yeah. that we actually turn something into the alphabet but a bit too easily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, in, in psychosis or whatever, what, yeah, what you do, I like this, is you do you do it too easily. Like what you do is you see the other as the reason. The monster's under the bed, the other, the conservatives or the liberals or whoever, there's the other that is the reason for the primal agony. And yes, that is a total failure. And, and symbolism, to symbolize it is so hard. It is such a, yeah, so you're right. It's a very hard process of, of beginning to put language to not feeling loved as a child or not, whatever it is. So yeah, there is, if it's too easy, it's not right. Like that's the thing, that's what I don't like about humanism mm. is if the death of God wasn't traumatic, you didn't go through it. <laughs> the death of God is always traumatic or the confrontation with the death of God is always traumatic. There is no, oh, that was easy. And by the way, somebody might say, oh, that was easy. I used to be, say, a believer. I used to believe in God and then I gave it up, whatever. That's fine. But then they say, I went out with somebody and I broke up with them and I was utterly devastated, utterly destroyed. I went, that's the death of God because you thought that other person would make you whole and complete. You oh. thought, and so that's your death of God. It, it is traumatic and the symbolism. But is that, does that answer? Is it, are we on the same page or? Yeah, well, it's just, it's a, yeah. It's just this is quite, yeah. How do you know that the symbol you've got? Because there's lots of ways of making symbols, right? Yeah, mm. yes. And it's, it's when you no longer have a scapegoat. That's the very key, yeah. It's when, but when you mm. no longer have some other that's the outsider. And by the way, technically, that's what the proletariat is. The proletariat is not a class for Marx. It's the new class. It's the group that is completely outside the symbolic register. That is the, and they're the, they're the giver of truth. So it's when you have, oh, can I say one thing? Um, no, 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 sorry. Yeah, no, okay. yes. um, of course you can. So there's a thing called Russell's paradox. It's very interesting. So Russell's paradox is if you imagine that there's a catalog, someone's making a catalog of every catalog that doesn't include itself. So some library is going, every catalog, library catalog that doesn't include itself is in this catalog. Then the question is, do you include that catalog in the thing, right? Because if you do include it, uh, you're including a catalog that does include itself. So that ruptures it. And if you don't include it, it's incomplete. <laughs> God, this might be too much, but... The <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I was enjoying just yeah. two minutes ago. I was like, "Yeah, I'm actually yeah. getting this. I know what's going on." And okay, now no. he's showing yeah. out. Yeah. 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 Yeah
whenever you're trying to be to totalizing and have a whole and a complete, there's always either something excluded or something that you include that ruptures okay, up. Okay, yeah. And we have to... Um, we have to make space for that scapegoat. So yeah, scapegoating, and that's what that's what paranoia is. Mm. That there's some other, some group, the Illuminati or the Q or whatever it is, some group that's everywhere and nowhere that's responsible. Uh, mm. Mm. Interesting. You know, she's very good at pretending. It's very no. good. <laughs> mm, interesting. No, actually, that is interesting because I'm starting <laughs> to get it. Brian Johnson, utopic philosophy is always subpar because yes. the idea of cutting out the other to make perfection is by definition imperfect. Yes. An imperfect, contradictory utopia is the only thing that makes sense. Yes, 100%. Yes. And utopia is a good phrase, a, a, a non-utopic, yeah, apps. That's what I mean by totalitarianism is never totalitarian enough. The whole can never embrace everything. There's always an outsider. That's what we have to embrace, both the inside and the outside. Anyway, yeah, very good. Well done. Hannah says, is utopia not always on the horizon but never fully realized? Yes, 100%. <laughs> oh, do I do that? <laughs> yes! <laughs> Hannah, Hannah, so I'm just going to do sausage. yes and no answers yes. from now on. Yes. So, no. So good. So good. Yes and maybe. Ja Jasper says, the fact that the cosmos can only evolve from a state of lower entropy in brackets order, to a state of higher entropy, in brackets chaos, is actually what causes the arrow of time. Yes, that's very true. Uh, yes. Ryan, yes. 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 Ryan Scott, we're doing it now, we're doing it Ryan Scott says, the real practical difference is simply, does your community want to be challenged to a different future or affirmed in their present? Yes, that's it. Yes, can you <laughs> do decentering practices, do decenter, or do we want to just have a purity culture of the same? Yeah, great. Yes. Jasper says, i.e. our experience that time flows from past to future. So in physics, the evolution from order to chaos is what makes time and thus life possible. Yes. Now, the only yes. thing I'll add to that is um, that it's not, the the additional thing is there's there's this movement of entropy, but it's not that we're moving from order to chaos. It's also that chaos has been interwoven from the very beginning. That's the interesting thing as well. The chaos isn't kind of like almost what's playing out, but is is right there from the beginning. Well, Kevin <laughs> did say, back to the idea of creating collectives. Is it useful or even possible to inject this disruption into church or to create these collectives outside the institution? Yeah, that's a biggie. And, I, you know, but that's a brilliant question. And it's the question of do you start it from scratch or can you inject this into the structures that presently exist? It's a biggie. I change my mind on that sometimes because mm. um, the whole thing of new wine and old wineskins, do you rupture things? Do you just start your own thing? And then I, I find that when I stepped out of confessional religion and did my own thing, I ended up having more influence with the, with the collective. Whenever Luther started his own thing, he actually ended up having a huge influence on the Catholic Church precisely because he stepped out and did something new. So the new also transforms the old, both move forward together. So yeah, that's a good question. Probably too much for now, but probably, and I know Kev very well, and Kev's done some great stuff and has gone on this journey. Um, probably, less, you, you probably need to start your own thing. <laughs> Jeffrey Reinhardt, so Feuerbach? No, Feuerbach. Feuerbach. Yeah was right. We've created a God of certainty to meet our needs and to justify our desires. Yes, so Feuerbach, you're absolutely right. Like, so Feuerbach's my favorite humanist, not by family. He is my favorite, he is right. The, what he's wrong in, and I'm a big fan of Feuerbach, is that, so he, he rightly says that God is a, a projection of ourselves and our own image and all of that. Yeah. But the, the God that I'm talking about is not a projection, but in the words of John Caputo, is a projectile, is the, um, is the fundamental disruption of our own sense of self. So you're absolutely right that what Feuerbach's, Feuerbach basically captures confessional religion in a nutshell. What we're talking about then is something that, um, uh, that we're Feuerbach where Feuerbach doesn't get, he doesn't see that there's a, there's a possibility for a self-divided God. The, 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 real, the real issue with humanism is that you have this notion of God as whole and complete and God is, mm -hmm. you know, a projection of ourselves. The, okay, oh. so the, for Feuerbach then, there's a human essence. There is a sense of, so God is a reflection of who we are. Now, Karl Marx comes along and he says, no, God is not a reflection of who we are. God is a reflection of who we are at a given moment. 
God is not a reflection of human possibility and potentiality at all times. God is simply the reflection of the ideology of the present age made divine. Right? So that's a very good critique. Because Feuerbach basically said, when you look at God, you, you can understand what human beings are. And Marx says, no, all you see is what the dominant ideology is. And so Marx's anti-humanism was to say that humans are not, I don't have some sort of essence that is unbroken and absolute. Human beings are divided. And, 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 what, and that's my critique of humanism in a nutshell. But do you want to come back on that? Because that's just a touch on, on the subject. But it's very, very feels, important. Feels happy with that. Yeah, one, minute. one minute. One, one minute. One minute. One last question. One. Okay, um, uh, some strange YouTube name, Mikai338, still having a hard time with the idea of embracing uncertainty. Yes. Maybe it's just a problem of not having good language for a, for a chaosmus, mm -hmm. but sounds like we're encouraging certainty about uncertainty. Uncertain. Yes. This, and you can disagree mm. with me, you can be wrong if you want, that's fine. No, I, I, but w yes, you are hitting something, right? The mystics, and a certain, there's a certain position which says we don't know, right? There's an unknowing. And by the way, of course, there's an unknowing things we don't know. There's loads of things we don't know. But there, the question is whether we can know something and also even more deeply, whether we can, whether unknowing is interwoven into reality. This is a question and we're not gonna answer it in one minute, right? But is whether say, quantum undecidability or evolutionary um, uh, organisms uh, or incompleteness within mathematics, do they reflect something of reality itself or do they just simply reflect, you know, our, our inner mind? That's the question. And I want to say the latter, like I literally think that we can, that we, mind and matter can be linked. We can have an understanding of reality, what Hegel called absolute knowledge. But I have to convince you still, and you're not convinced yet, and that's fine, it's good, don't be convinced yet. But because you can't be convinced too soon, you could go on the journey, and I could be wrong, but that is, but you're, what I want to affirm is you've hit the nail on the head. Is it that we can't know what ultimate reality is? Or can we know what ultimate reality is? Or can we realize what ult that ultimate reality doesn't know itself? that basically God says, yeah, I'm surprised too. You're the luckiest motherfucker I ever met, right? That the unknowing <laughs> is interwoven into knowing. Yeah. That was the punchline, by the yeah, way. Yeah, I just think <laughs> that. And I laughed. Did you see how I brought it around? Yeah. You see how I did it? That I'm a pro. That is pro moves right there, right there. Thank you very much. Peter. Thank you. That's it. <laughs>